Hi, welcome to The Postscript. This is a weekly podcast and YouTube series uh, from Living Faith Bible Institute. And we've been having a conversation with Pastor Kale Horvath, a uh, future missionary uh, headed to Hungary. And this week we're gonna talk to him about what God's been doing in his life, the calling on his life, and, uh, and what he's expecting when he gets to the mission field. And so welcome back, Kale. Great to be here, man. Yeah, I really appreciate you being with us. Absolutely. Uh, so the very first question, Mm-hmm. When did you start hearing, and how did you start hearing that God was calling you and your family, your beautiful young family, uh, to Hungary? Yeah, so um, it's it's a really cool thing because I, I know that our pastors talk about this a lot. Jeff talks about this a lot. Jeff being in my life to help mentor me has been such a blessing sure. to be able to go to the field. He always has said, man, ever since before I even thought about missions, he's always said, going from Acts 13, when, when, when Paul and Barnabas are sent out from the church, mm-hmm. that God calls you to a work, not a place. Mm-hmm. If you're thinking about the place, you're ahead of yourself. Yeah. And so that always freed me to just not worry about that. And I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but that, that was kind of the beginning. It's like, I'm going to worry about the work God's called me to do, the sure. work God's called all of us to do, and maybe someday he'll ask me to change my address for it. Mm-hmm. Like that, That's a lot less of a step when you think about it in those terms than yeah. like, wow, is God calling me to be a missionary? Well, how about you think about... What work has God called you to do? It's the work he's called us all to do right here. Yeah. Well, maybe someday, if you do it long enough and keep preparing, he'll ask you to do it somewhere else. Sure. That's not nearly as big of a step as like the other perspective yeah, of thinking right. about it. Um, but really, so it's a cool thing. I, I think I said in the last podcast that um, I felt God called me to be a pastor when I was 16. Mm-hmm. And so when I graduated high school, that's what um, that's what I focused on. Like I, I did other things and kind of bopped around doing different jobs and stuff. I, I did auto body. I, I went to a vocational high school yeah. and, and, uh, and I didn't make a whole lot of money doing that. So I ended up Going back to school for a minute. You, like, were a far, you worked in a pharmacy. I worked in pharmacy. Yeah. I was a pharmacy tech, so you know I'd fix cars and count, sold drugs for, right. before I was a pastor. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> and so you know I kind of bopped around, but all the while you know training, being discipled, mm-hmm. doing uh, the Bible courses that our our church had, serving in any way I could, because mm-hmm. I knew what I wanted to do. Just didn't know when mm-hmm. that would happen. And so it was the year was 2012. It was the end of the year because I got married at the beginning of the year. So I was 21, freshly married. We had a, a missions conference at our church in, in New Philly, not a mission focus. Um, actually, it was probably November-ish. So it was, you know, pretty, I would have went to mission focus right after. And uh, at that missions conference, God just got a hold of me. And what I realized there when he was convicting me through the preaching and just through his word was that I I was surrendered to be a pastor kind of on my own terms. Like uh, almost like as a teenager thinking about like, what, what do I want to be when I grow up? Well, I want to be a pastor. Well, praise the Lord, brother. That's mm-hmm. a good thing. But what God was teaching me was, are you willing to do kind of as Pastor Mark has said in the past, whatever, whenever, wherever? Yeah. And I was like, wow, I'm I'm not surrendered to that. Right. I'm surrendered yeah. to being a pastor at my church if it means buying pizza and Nerf guns for the youth. Like that's mm-hmm. what I want to yeah, do, sure. you know. And so it was kind of an issue of being all in, mm-hmm. like not all in or like are you saved or all in or are you willing to serve? Like yeah, I was I was in for that, but I wasn't completely surrendered to whatever God would do with my life. I just, I wanted what, him to do something. Mm-hmm. And so it was at that missions conference at the end of 2012 that I was like, all right, God, I'm all in. Let's do this. Whatever you want me to do, whether that's missions or not, I'm here for it, mm-hmm. you know, as the kids say, I'm here for sure. it. Sure. So it was at the end of that year that I really felt like I was all in. And, uh, you know, 2013 was, was kind of a, a, a prove it year for me. God did some stuff in my life that made uh, just, you know, dross rise to the top that he scraped off and was proving me and preparing me. And uh, it was during that time, just the next year, um, I think it was in the summer that I met Brett Bartlett for the first time, pastor okay. uh, in Lambertville, Michigan. Yeah, yeah. Jeff had just met him not that long for ago. For some reason in my mind, you guys, like, that connection has always been there. Right. It's not, actually it's not... still, well, and when you know Brett, you feel like you've known him forever. Sure, too, that's you know? true. But uh, no, I just, I met him in 2013 and I don't think Jeff had known him very long either. Mm-hmm. I was, we were doing our summer camp, which our summer camp, we drive the kids up to Michigan. It's about a four hour drive from where we're at in Ohio. And uh, we were sitting there and Jeff always like drives up for one or two of the days just to hang out, see the kids and stuff. And, and we were up there chatting during one of the free times. 
And he's like, hey, man, you got to meet this pastor that I met. Uh, he lives up here. He's about 30 minutes away. He's going to be over later. He does missions in Hungary. You should meet him. Yeah. And the reason I was intrigued, and the only reason Jeff even said that, was because I'm Hungarian. Mm -hmm. Like, my last name is Horvath, and in Hungary, it's pronounced Horvath. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I've never been there. My dad's full Hungarian, so I'm half. I've never been there. My dad didn't grow up speaking the language. It's just one of those, you know, quirky family tidbits that you grow up knowing. Like, oh, you know, at, at the holidays, we eat some food that other people don't because sure, grandma's right. yeah, yeah, different, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, But I was intrigued, and that's why Jeff introduced him to me in the first place. was like, hey, you're a Hungarian. What are the chances? This guy does ministry in Hungary. You should talk to him. Like, oh, okay. So we uh, we met and talked, and basically, long story short, he invited me. Like, hey, why don't you come over with us and do a summer camp with us? Yeah. We do these summer camps, evangelical camps for orphans every summer. And, he, and I was like, awesome. So the next year in 2014, I went with them. And I've been going back ever since. And, and those are incredibly fruitful. We've had some of our members here at Midtown. Yeah, yeah. We've got to serve alongside yeah. some Midtowners. And I, it's, it's amazing the number of people who come to Christ at these It's It's been unreal. Camps, right? It's like, been it, kids every year, anywhere from like, I've seen as little as 12. Uh, There's usually 70 to 80 kids there, mm -hmm. as little as 12, as many as like 30. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we're talking kids of all ages and young adults uh, translators that we hire have gotten saved. Wow. Social workers who come with the kids have gotten saved. And so I kept going back because I thought it was cool. I enjoyed it. And and like, as long as Brett's church would allow me to go with them, I would. And so, you know, 2014, you know, I just keep going back just about every year. Um, went a few times in the winter time to do some other ministry with them about giving Christmas presents to the, the mm. same kids we minister to in the yeah. summer. And, uh, but then like every year, it was just more of one of these things of like, could this be something that I go do? Like when Brett's church started that ministry, he always told me, he's like, you know, this was an opportunity we stumbled into. But from the get go, we knew like, you know, we, there's, there's not a missionary that we support here. There's no church. Not that there aren't missionaries or churches there, but they were always praying that, you know, either God would send one of them to go start a church or that they would, you know, at the very least get paired up with somebody, find a guy there. Yeah. And I remember him saying, even at Mission Focus, probably six or seven years ago, saying there are people who are waiting and begging for a church yes. in Hungary yeah. and thinking to myself, well, gosh, where is someone this person? Someone needs to go. Yeah. yeah. I, I, knew it was, I knew it wasn't me. <laughs> right, but right. But I knew there had to be someone. Um, yeah. yeah. And so just going every year and, and just and praying over this thing and think, you know, remembering what God did in my life in 2012 and 2013 and, and being open with Jeff about it the whole time because I didn't go on staff as the youth pastor until 2015. Mm -hmm. And so when I was, you know, interviewed for that youth pastor job, right. it was like, well, man, I, you know, I think this is what God's doing in your life and in our church, but what about hungry? And I was like, well, I don't know, but I know this is what God wants to do right now. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep going as long as they'll let me. And as long as the doors open and, and we'll just, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. It was kind of one of those things where I just pragmatically, I, I wanted to serve at least four years. You know, let, let's let's see an entire class go through. Mm -hmm. um, so that there, there was some turnover at our youth pastor position, which kind of made some things up in the air. And yeah, I'm like, that, we that just need some stability. Instability is not good for you. Yeah, and, and for an adult who's older than, you know, 19, four years doesn't sound like much. But, you know, in a high schooler's eye, to see someone at the youth pastor position yeah. for four consecutive years is a big deal. Yeah. And so I was like, let's just plan on that, and we'll see where God's at and where we're at then. And so at the end of, you know, the third year— uh, Crazy. I'll do this really short, but it's just cool how God confirms things, even timing, you know, in your life. I, you know, I'd been thinking about it, praying about it. Um, my wife and I had been trying for a baby for a while. Brooke. Brooke. Brooke for, for people who don't is know my her wife. Name, yeah. yeah. Brooke Elizabeth yeah. Horvath. I can't spell her middle name, though. It's spelled goofy. <laughs> her parents did that to her, poor thing. It's shameful. Yeah, it is. It's really. Name your kids normal things, Keep man. They got to they gotta have that name as an adult someday. Yeah. Goodness gracious. I named my kid Judah. That's probably not very normal either. <laughs> But so so we're trying for kids. We get pregnant, and it took like a year. So it's, it wasn't like we were like trying to line things up on the calendar. But it just so happens that he was due the week before summer camp. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you were a youth pastor. I, I don't have time that's for that. That's impossible. Have, sorry, God, that won't work. Yeah, you know. Right. And so like I know this, you know, well in advance. I'm like, well, I'm just gonna, you know, my second hand, you know, second in command guy who's my right hand man. He's just gonna have to run this thing because I don't know if baby will come early, come late, you know. Right. And uh, so basically, that whole year, I was, you know, doing everything in the background, you know. Um, administratively, sure. all while prepping him to actually run this camp. And that was my third year of youth ministry. And so you hardly, I didn't, you hardly knew how to do it yourself. Oh, yeah, right. And, I mean, <laughs> after a couple of years, and then yeah. now you're training someone else. Right. Which is great. But I didn't think about the bigger picture until, so Judah came on time. 
like the day of, which is crazy for you know your first child. Yeah, that's rare. Um, and so he's he's comes, he's healthy, wife's doing good, and so camp is a week later, and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go up for a couple days, not the whole week. You know, I won't go up on the bus. I'll just I'll drive up be there for a day or two and then come home uh, just to make sure everything's good. Cause I'm a little bit of a, just, you know, detail guy. Like yeah. let's make sure everything's good. Yeah. And I get up there and it was the most bittersweet thing ever, man. I, I sit in the service. Tony Godfrey was our camp speaker. Mm-hmm. He does this thing. Everyone leaves to go to cabin time in the evening. Josh is running everything. I'm just sitting in the empty sanctuary being like, they don't need me. They got yeah. this. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of the bittersweet thing of like discipleship and replacing yourself is eventually yeah. you did it. Yeah. And it's like, wow, okay, God, let's start. And so that that summer, um, which would have been 2018, um, is when I started talking to Jeff, be like, hey, man, I, you know, I think God's showing me that this, you know, it's time. This is my last year. How did Brooke receive that when you started? I mean, she was prepared, I guess, over time. For, yeah. for that calling. But but what did she think of it? Like, what are the the steps? About on? missions or... or Hungry just, specifically. Like, Hungry specifically. So that was a cool thing. When when we got married, we got married young enough, and I wanted to be a pastor since I was a teenager. Yeah. That it was kind of... It wasn't an ultimatum, but it was like, hey, you know, we're engaged, but like, if F- you don't want to do this thing, like, you know, <laughs> this is your last chance. You know, I, yeah. I don't want to be a nine to five guy. I'm, it's, you know, ministry is going to be crazy. And she's... Yeah. So she was all in from the beginning. That's cool. Um, but even when God, I felt God calling me to be in missions, you know, in 2012, um, she was, she's just got such a, not just a submissive heart, but just a, I want to follow God heart. Mm-hmm. And one of the cool things that um, God laid on my heart was I wanted God to call her, not just me. Yeah. I know there's some old school missions stories, Philadelphian guys who drag their wife to the field. Yeah, that was a different world. A little bit. It was a different world. And hey, man, I just can't do an unhappy wife for the rest of my life. So let's like, you know, yeah. let's make sure that God's calling her too. So she had an opportunity to go to Albania on a missions trip, a medical missions trip, because she worked for an eye doctor. Um, and I was like, why don't you go to that? And I'll go to Hungary that week and and just be on a missions trip without me and see how it hits you. And I didn't even know what was going to happen. I was just praying that God would just give her a personal conviction from it. And 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 he did. And she she loved Hungary since the first time she stepped there too. But just to have that confirmation, yeah, God's working in her heart too, just for missions in general. Super important. She's your helper. Yeah. You know, she might absolutely. not ever be a pastor, right? Right. But she has to be the the gal that supports the pastor. Well, and she has to be okay with it at, le- at the very least. Yeah, for you sure. Know? For so sure. that, you know, she's not resentful right. of, of me or God yeah. the whole time we're living there. And so that was a cool thing. That's very cool. So, um, so you're out on deputation, which in layman's terms means you're raising money, you're raising support. Fundraising. Fundraising. Our old school oh, Baptist word, yeah, deputation. Yeah, <laughs> Fundraising, which sounds like you're selling chocolate bars from door to door for your softball yeah, team or whatever. Pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, you're going and visiting all the Living Faith Fellowship churches, uh, making connections. I've heard you say that it's fairly difficult and 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 outside of your wheelhouse a little bit. Absolutely. Name because I want to talk about the mission <laughs> itself. Name yeah. one uh, difficult thing about it. The most difficult. Do you ever about see it. Up, the I movie? Did, yeah. At the very beginning, when that little kid with the backpack comes up to the old guy's house, he knocks on the door, and he's like, hello, sir or madam, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. so-and-so from the, the script. The, yeah, the script. And it's like so many emails and so many cold calls, and you know, it's you just feel like, hello, sir or madam, my name is Kale Horvath, and I'm a missionary. Yeah. And, and it's I think just the difficult part is, I, and, 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 not a, and I don't mean this to discredit anybody, but not a lot of... Uh, well, I should just say not the majority of missionaries who go to the field were pastors first. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they like this was, sure. you know, they went to school or they did their thing and God called and they're going to the field. Yeah. And so being a pastor and going from what I was used to when I loved with the preaching and the ministry and then stopping that, because we're going to go do that somewhere else. But for now, your job is to call people who don't really want to talk to you and ask them for money, which is a very blunt way to put it, I get yeah. it. But, but, but it's kind of how it feels sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's like you feel like, your job is to interview for jobs. Sure. Nobody enjoys interviewing for jobs. It's, no, man, that's no, such no, an anxiety-filled no. thing. And, and so you're just kind of under a magnifying glass, unintentionally, but also rightfully. The, yeah. the pastor has to invest in you as much as he's investing in what God is doing. Right. And so it's just, while, while it's a blessing, it's it's also difficult. And you're, you're fairly laid back, organic, Organic, I like. That. I mean, like, I don't. You're not scripted. None of your shows feel very scripted. Like your your, your show with Corey. I'm not a scripted. Guy. Is not no, really that scripted. No. You have a direction that you're going in terms of the conversation, sure. but it might meander, and that's okay <laughs> right. with you. 
But then to go into a situation where you're feeling like there's, oh, I have to cover this information. I've yeah. got to make sure that my shirt is buttoned the right way. And it is the same thing over and over again. I can't too, have gauge ears anymore. Or whatever it is. Like <laughs> I didn't have gauge no, ears. So you're crazy. Of course not. No. Of course you did I've not. always been an adult man. It's tidy. Yes. A tidy Christian well boy. Well absolutely. Um, <laughs> but man, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's hard. But I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that we as, as Midtown Baptist Temple and speaking for the other Living Faith Churches, we know you. We've yeah, and that, that has and, been such a blessing, I yeah. will say, is just having a fellowship of churches that like, because here's the big thing, very few cold calls work. I, uh, I've i actually had a few people show interest from cold call, which is cool, yeah, but the majority God. of them, like, you, they need to know somebody so they can at least validate that like you're you're a godly guy or sure, you, you know, what's you, your background? You believe like, the word of God. And, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And so that having that network and even being a pastor on staff and having friends myself uh, has really helped. And yeah. just knowing godly men who who want to uh, invest in the mission has, has been such a blessing. Yeah, praise God. So um, timetable-wise, when do you want to be on the ground? Our goal, which is somewhat arbitrary, but also, you know, we're praying yeah, about it, is, sure. is August of okay. 2020. So okay. we're hoping by the end of the summer we can... Get over there. First thing that you do when you get there? First thing. Um, well, it's literally to, the first hard thing. hard to know, I guess. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, well, hopefully we will have uh, an apartment or something picked out before we get there. Right. So really um, focusing on making sure everything feels good. I heard a missionary once say, you know, when talking about family and wives and everything, get the last picture hung on the wall. Make, make it a home. Don't just get there and then leave because your wife's going to go crazy feeling like she, not only did you just leave America, but you don't even have a home. Yeah. So, you know, we'll focus on the home. But the other cool, unique thing about our ministry is that there, there are guys there who are way, like I, one of my best friends' name is Zalan. I got to lead him to the Lord last year, known him for three years. Uh, he's 19 or 20. And have you discipled him? Like, did you, I mean, how does that work? Well, no, because I'm not there. Yeah. And so he's not like, he's like wanting to be online. No, we haven't really done. We do text every week. Um, and, and, you know, I pray for him and we pray together and he's asking me how I'm doing and he helps, he corrects all my terrible Hungarian that I'm, you know, practicing on him. Um, but that's the goal is when we get there to disciple that guy, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So there, there are people there that are ready. They're waiting. And so while, you know, tempering myself, because I'm kind of a, I don't even mean this in one of those weird, you know, feigned humility interview things of, uh, you know, my biggest weakness is I'm a hard worker. Like, sure. but, but like what I default to is like working overtime and blue, you know, I just grew up with a blue collar dad, like sure. just work hard. I get that. So, you know, while tempering that to be there for my family, it's, there really is a hit the ground running kind of a thing that like, there's, there's this window of you're the new American in a country. Why are you here? People are interested, curiosity. So really uh, discipling those guys who are interested, but then getting a Bible study started with them. Um, because, I mean, that's, that's how we're going to plant a church, man. Just start studying the Bible. That's right. Open, open the book. That's right. Um, and so the, the beautiful thing about, about this particular work, and I think if there's pastors and missionaries uh, that are interested in helping or supporting you in any way whatsoever, is that there are, there's already essentially a church waiting for you t- when you get there. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There are people who are chomping at the bit to be disciples. Yeah. Mid to, I mean, I've been going since 2014. Wildwood has been serving there for about 10 years total. So mm-hmm. there are people, even in other counties of the country, that, that are saved. And so like, I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm personally going to focus on planting one church that, that can plant other churches. Yeah, yeah. And uh, th- that's just a personal preference. That's, right. that's what I feel peace right. about right now. Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to necessarily maybe try to plant 10 at the same time because I can't give myself, you yeah, know, my you want soul. The, we just talked with Mark Trotter about the model church. Yeah. You want to establish right. the, the model church exactly. that has the strength. That will then reproduce the other churches. Yeah. But, man, I'm going to follow up with those guys all around the country sure. because who knows what God's doing in all of their lives. And, you know, yeah. that's where the flexibility is. Well, yes. this is, you know, man, you know, makes his plan, but God devises. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. So it's like, well, here's our plan, but let's see what God's doing. Yeah. You know? so, yeah, absolutely. So we are excited. And it's a pioneering work, which is really, I'm really excited about. Not not joining an established ministry. You know, like, hey, we're let's go start from the ground. No, that's fantastic. We're excited about that too. Um, can you give us just a few prayer requests that we can be praying for you about? Yeah, absolutely. So currently we're a little over 50% fundraised. Awesome. And so we're, we're trying to do it all in a year. So God is providing and, and just really blowing our minds. Um, but really, if people would just pray that the cool thing about being efficient with our timeline in fundraising is just that God directing us to the churches that want to take us on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like a lot of guys have to just filter through a lot of churches and present and the church can't or or won't take them on. And so we're just, my, my prayer specifically has just been that God would guide us to the churches that want to take us on mm. just just to be efficient so we can get there sooner. Not, not because 
we want to see if we can set a record for getting to the field. But there's just people waiting on me, yeah. you know, yeah. and so and, and waiting on the Lord. And so we just want to be a good steward of our time. So pray for that um, and, and that, uh, that God would just get us over there by the end of the summer of 2020. All right, man. Well, we're praying for you. And, and we'd ask that you would join us as well in praying for Kale and his family. Uh, that they would get to Hungary and that God would begin using them as soon as possible. I want to thank you, Kale, for being with Thanks, us. Man, I appreciate it. Uh, it's good interviewing you, and hopefully we'll get to do this again in the future. Sounds good. Um, but thank you for joining us as well uh, on this episode of The Postscript. Uh, you can learn more about The Postscript at thepostscriptshow.com. You can learn more about the Living Faith Fellowship at lffellowship.com. And uh, obviously, you can learn more about LFBI, Living Faith Bible Institute, uh, the, the institute that we've both attended uh, and learned uh, God's Word from. Uh, if you have questions or you want to learn more about Living Faith Bible Institute, you can go to lfbi.org and learn more there. Again, thank you for joining us. Uh, have a good day. Mm-hmm.